I'm moving on to the filter caps now and trying to work up a strategy on how to do them most efficiently. The guy that was down in here, that was easy. That's going between the ground chassis and the negative supply. So the positive goes to the chassis, the negative goes to the supply rail. So that was easy. Just tacked one side of the chassis and the other to the negative bus, right about where the original was. But of course the new one is much smaller. So then, moving on to these guys. So here's one in here. It's just a single suction. And that is actually in series with another. That's on the boost voltage. There's two electrolytics in series down there. Because a single just doesn't have enough uh, voltage rating. They uh, take some of the voltage off of uh, the flyback that gets rectified by the damper tube and actually use that to power the vertical circuits. So if we trace this out, uh, I think we will see, yep, the vertical size right there in that flexion amp. Uh, typically sets need a little more voltage than B plus can supply for the vertical, so they steal a little bit from the flyback circuit. Well, typically the highest range of electrolytic you can get is 450 volts like this 30 megahertz 450 and that's I don't specify the voltage I don't think but it's probably in excess of 500 volts so let me put two of these in series one of them is just down here the other one is referenced to ground and it's just part of a multi-section cap well I'm not quite sure how I want to go about replacing that or where I'm going to mount it so I just clipped the old one out and temporarily I've tacked the replacement in goes right to one lug on this cap and the other side goes to some circuitry in here. And now moving on to this guy which is one of the main supply caps. And I notice it's four sections but only two were used. And when I look over on this chassis it's only a two section cap. There's holes for two other lugs but they just have goo coming out because uh, that cap doesn't actually have two sections in it. Now one side of this, the can is going to that negative supply again and they were using it as kind of a uh, well, tie point so one wire is going over here this whole thing all these terminals are shorted together and then the others are going off over here so I figure I just clip those out and take these two wires and just run them right over to here which leaves the two positive lugs in the past I've restuffed caps, but these are mounted kind of goofy, so they don't really lend themselves that well to it, because typically I would like cut the can off the shoulder here and mount the new caps in there. Well, the mounting uh, for this is way up top, so you'd actually need to kind of gut it from the top, or I, I, you could uncrimp it, but that's a whole lot of work. So I think I'm going to be taking this out or leaving it in for appearance sake and mounting these two caps somewhere else so I'll trace out like where this wire goes well, I can see it goes right over to here so this is going here and the negative is going right to a lug next to it so I'm going to mount the new cap right in there on those two lugs on the terminal strip so I'll hopefully find a similar very convenient tie point for that guy here's a look at how those caps mount on the top side so here's the one that was down in there there's the other guy, and I noticed while I was loosening it up that it's got a bunch of tape wrapped around it. So, uh, pretty darn sure that is not the original, and that would explain why it's got the two extra lugs on it. Now, once I get these replaced, what I propose to do is pop out the horizontal output tube and maybe the vertical output tube and try powering this up. Uh, what, what that'll do is it won't matter if I have the yoke in there because the circuits that drive it will be disconnected so we're not going to get any pitch we're not going to get any high voltage but hopefully we'll get some sound and, uh, this set does have a continuous tuner and an i tube and it not only does tv but it does the fm band so with the tv stuff disabled if all is well we should be able to tune in some fm radio stations and I'll also find out if this tuning mechanism is alright. I've been lucky so far. 
Well, I guess I've really only worked on one of these, although I have a number of sets with continuous. And with one of these uh, continuous and duct tuners. Um, what I mean by luck is dial cord is intact, not the easiest thing to restring from what I've heard and seen online. And another potential problem is the shaft in here could be broken. I think that's more of a problem with the earlier styles. It has a long shaft running down inside here, and uh, there are variable inductors in here. That's how they do the continuous tuning. When they work, they work quite well. When they're damaged, they're very difficult to repair. While working down in this area, I've also been checking out the other chassis and I've been finding more and more evidence of old repairs or old repair attempts. I definitely do not like what I am seeing. For example, we've got a fuse here. It appears to be blown out. And what did somebody do? They wrapped a wire around each end. Not even solder on. Or maybe that was just a brief thing out in the field to see if they get it working. I also have a feeling that this fuse is rated for much higher than it should be. Well, you do not want to mess with that fuse. And I also noticed that it doesn't even exist in this set. It should be where this wire is, so whoever put that new cap in there decided not to use a fuse at all. That, and, that, and that is not a fuse for the whole set. That is a fuse for the flyback. That should only be a quarter amp. That's why I say it's important because I uh, don't want to burn up that flyback. So let's see what we've actually got in this one. I don't think it's right because it looks a little beefy. It's possible it's a quarter amp. Or... Uh, it's a half amp. Well, it's not terrible, but uh, certainly you should use a fuse that's appropriate. Well, now that I can get a better look at it, it looks like it actually might be intact as is. Oh, regardless, I'll be putting a proper quarter amp fuse in both sets. Now, something else curious about this. So we've got, so this is the main B plus right here, after the filter chokes and caps. So some of it goes through this fuse off to T401, which is the flyback. Now the other side has a tap going to a little bit of circuitry on the horizontal output area, but the bulk of the power for the set, all these bladder resistors, all these tabs going all over, all goes through the focus control. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And that explains why the focus controls on these sets is so beefy. It's a 25 watt rheostat. Sure, hope that's still good. Uh, so I'm sure they had their sound engineering reasons for that, but uh, it definitely seems like uh, should have been a simpler way to do that, so you could have most of the power going over here and just. Uh, tap a little bit off the focus uh, circuit rather than having all of it go through that rheostat. I finished up with the recap. The process made it a bit easier because I found convenient tie points for all the electrolytics. Just had to add one little terminal strip down here. Also replaced those little caps that are right on the AC line with some modern safety caps. So now I'm going to try powering it up, but I still don't have a yoke, so how can I go about doing that? Well, for starters, I popped out the vertical and horizontal output tubes. I use a 6SN7 with both sections parallel for the vertical, and a horizontal output tube goes in here. The other thing I wanted to do was figure out some way to substitute for the focus coil. Oh, I figured out pins on the socket for the yoke and focus coil and rigged in a power resistor. 
It's a 200 volt bus here, and the other end's going into this socket. So, uh, I think that's all I need to do. So I'm going to hook up the power cord and put my voltmeter right in that 200 volt bus and see what we get. I made up a little cheat sheet here of what controls are what. Kind of an odd layout, so we've got focus on the far end, and then this is volume power. The outside is horizontal hold, and I noticed there's a bit of stiff wire wrapped around that, which makes it really hard to turn. The other chassis doesn't have that. And we have mode, FM TV phono. I think that's FM mode, and contrast brightness, and tuning, which is working. Alright, so here we go. Mm, dim the overhead lights a little, and turn this thing on. And the pilot lights up front. DC mode, DC mode. So this should be 200 volts now. I expect without any load, I'm just I disconnected two of the more power hungry circuits in the set, so I expect this voltage is going to be quite a bit on the high side. Tubes are lighting up. The voltage is dropping as the other. Circuits warm up. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Past the smoke test. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, grab the speaker and rig up an antenna. These sets actually have an RCA RF connector on the back, so uh, I've got a standard audio type cable here which is shielded, which is no good, but on the other end I clipped in an alligator clip to the center conductor, and it's just trailing off upwards. So crude, but we'll get a signal into the set at least. Alright, here's the speaker hooked up, so let's try this again. That's a good sign. Very dirty volume control. Let's see about this tuner. So here's the FM band in here. Nothing. Not so sure about this mode switch though, so let's try the other positions. Hey! Or something. Is that your it's indicator. Yeah, it's responding. Cool. Don't want YouTube to flag my video. Turn that down. It's weird because. I'm in the middle position, which just says TV. Maybe that's phono, TV, and FM. Maybe you get the FM in both TV and FM position. Holding steady around 300. Okay, so that's that's about 50% high. Not so good. Let's see how warm these power resistors getting? It's, it's pretty darn toasty. This is pretty darn cold though. I don't know how much current's supposed to flow through, but I thought it'd be at least a little warm. Anyway, I need. I know I need to go over those power resistors a bit. There's still some an ugly repair down there. And 
I may end up just replacing all of these with modern reliable power resistors. Alright, so what's up next? Oh, gotta find a uke. Um, I also want to clean up and test these tubes. Yeah, these are just all the original tubes. I kind of like to leave all the original tubes in there and see how things go before I bother testing them. So I found that quite often a set will work. At least to some extent with the old tubes in there. And then I want to get inside that high voltage box because there are, is a voltage um, doubler, I think it is. And I need to replace... Uh, some capacitors inside that box. Here's a look down in there. There's one of the caps, there's another one down there, and there's a third way down in there. All these and these modern high voltage ceramics to replace them just like I did on the uh, Dumont I did a few years ago. There's also some power resistors. I'll check one down in there. Alright, so what's up next? I'll find a uke. Uh, I'll also want to clean up and test these tubes. There's some power resistors. I'll check one down in there. And I want to replace that. With some nice building high voltage wire. Get that ugly splice repair out of there. So, still plenty of work to do, but uh, very promising first power up. 